Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. And today we're going to talk about useful optimists. But first, let's roll that title. You're watching the Tesla Life Experience. Hey everyone, thanks very much for joining us. With me as always, Mr. Casey Green from the Mid-Atlantic region. How are you today, sir? Doing all right. This one over here, she's uh, active. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Looking through books and all sorts of stuff going on over there. Yeah. So that'll keep some of the viewers interested because uh, otherwise it's just boring watching you and I. But I uh, <laughs> thought I'd talk a little bit about this, uh, this segment uh, about uh, Optimus Prime. Subprime, prime, prime, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Optimus uh, was brought up in the latest earnings call. Uh, they talked a little bit about Elon. Talked a little bit about where the company was going. He mentioned, of course, uh, autonomous is where Tesla is aiming, and part of the autonomous movement, of course, is Optimus's ability uh, to be useful. Uh, to be aware of its surroundings, to be able to interact with humans uh, doing those type of tasks uh, that humans at this point probably find repetitive. Uh, but um, Elon talked a little bit about how they were going to start to produce Optimus version one uh, next year, and that um, those robots were going to be used uh, in the Tesla factory. Uh, they are going to be used for some repetitive tasks that bore most, most humans to tears. Uh, they are going to be used uh, slowly uh, to see what kind of dexterity they have. Uh, of course, we've seen the videos with it handling the eggs or being able to put blocks uh, in certain orders or in certain forms uh, to move things around from table to table, uh, stack things. So obviously the dexterity that they have uh, is impressive and it is getting better as time goes along. It's, we've seen the walking videos. We've seen the ability for it to uh, shuffle back and forth uh, to the left, to the right. Uh, and of course, they've talked about, we haven't seen too much of this, but of course, FSD is being used for its spatial awareness to figure out where it is, what's around it, what objects are solid, what ones can be walked between. Uh, what ones can't. And um, Elon talked about how uh, Optimus was going to be a useful tool uh, in the Tesla factory. And of course, he's talking about Gigafactory uh, Texas, uh, where it, it will be used probably initially in some sort of a, a lab setting, but would roll out from there to a point where I could see interaction on a line or being able uh, to put it on its own line or mixed with humans uh, depending on the task that's that's being uh, rolled out but we're starting to get some exciting news here like this is this is starting to become a lot more real uh, when you can see a robot is actually performing tasks on a given line or uh, given a certain task and performing those tasks, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see it. The other thing that, that Elon mentioned was that after version one, uh, the year after in 2026, uh, he's thinking that that will be the version two rollout of uh, Optimus based on the uh, experience that they've gotten from the first year, they'll make some changes, and that will be the one that will be first for sale for consumers. Now, I will preface that to say uh, Elon has always mentioned things like two weeks, uh, which hasn't yes. turned into two weeks. And of course, uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt because that's Elon's management style is just to push people to the limit. Uh, maybe not being able to. Why not my server? Thing, Why not my server? They were able to uh, get to a certain goal. That's what he's after. So it's something that um, that Elon always does that in his management style. That's nothing new, uh, and that's what we have to keep in mind when he talks about timetables. Definitely. Yeah, Mocho said that uh, her her use case for the robot would be shopping. She said robot shopping. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> shopping that's interesting I, that's not one that came to my mind initially but uh yeah 
But I mean, worst place to have to shop than at work. <laughs> I need you to give me a pallet of batteries. Pick the best ones, the most ripe. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is exciting stuff, Casey. This is uh, we start getting to next year, which is you know we're, we're like six months away uh, for breaking into 2025. And that's when we can expect that this uh, type of uh, use is going to start happening at Giga Texas. And uh, I am sure that Tesla is going to be quite happy to share any videos uh, of uh, these these robots starting to do these tasks. And of course, keep in mind, the initial starting tasks are probably going to be limited. Uh, okay. They're going to be, uh, uh, you know, they're... There are going to be small successes at the beginning. Uh, it, it's being able to roll this out. I even see that if if these robots are on a particular, say, um, uh, line doing a task, that they may be tethered with electrical cables uh, to the power source uh, so that they don't have to even worry about charging at the beginning. You know, they just hook them up to the actual grid of the uh, location they're in and uh, they can just uh, draw power, uh, and they don't have to worry about them, you know, moving all that much uh, beside, you know, their feet or or going to a, a certain area of the factory. If they're in some some sort of a, a work area, you probably tether them so that they're always uh, pulling the proper amount of electricity, and you don't have to worry about recharging or or whether the batteries are acting normally. Those are things that can be figured out. At, at a later time, what you're after is the functionality, uh, as yes. it says, useful robots. I can't wait to see some of these videos that they might share with us because they'll kind of kind of set our mind for like what the software is capable of, as well as how we might use it ourselves. And the uh, on the on the live show this week, we talked about how uh, how our cars were going around certain obstacles, like how how mine didn't run over the Canada Goose, and how uh, Lee's car and, um, and Patrick's car got a little closer than comfort uh, for for uh, from some smaller animals. And so you're going to need to be able to watch out for for smaller turtles and smaller rabbits uh, if you're traversing a, a corporate campus, for instance. And it's the same cameras and the same hardware. So as that domain is is trained. Hopefully there'll be some some crossover to the car. I obviously don't need my car to be able to sort batteries in a factory, but there there is still some crossover. Yeah, certainly with it with the uh, with the robot and its dexterous hands, uh, they're going to be handling you know small objects uh, or can handle small objects as to whether or not they're starting with that or, or where where they're heading with it. But certainly uh, uh, being able to have the FSD and the robot understand what it's looking at. Uh, position something in a different way in order to use it uh, or to assemble it. Uh, those, that's that's different than what the car is doing. Uh, with the car just looking for what's around me and just wanting not to hit anything. Whereas the robot says, "What's around me? Where's the widget I'm supposed to pick up and apply to widget B?" And and that's something different than what the car is doing. Um, it's it, it's an extra level, but of course, uh, as Elon has, has has indicated many times before, that this is a progression. Uh, they're using the FSD base from the car to put into the robot to give it that spatial awareness, and then they're building on that to perform these extra tasks. So uh, this is this is going to be real interesting when we start getting into this. And again, again, we're going to get a limited view of this from the outside, especially in the beginning. Uh, but uh, this is this is the progression of automation when it comes to a humanoid robot. And this is something that I don't know if, as a you know someone that liked sci-fi uh, still does that um, I would have imagined uh, at this point in my life that that we'd be seeing uh, the start of this. Right. I mean, I grew up. Uh, as, as I was growing up, uh, Osimo and all of them came a little bit later, and then they kind of fizzled out. And it's like, oh, that was just some sci-fi thing, and it's not going to happen. And then, uh, then we had Boston Dynamics come out, and and, and this come out. And it's like, eh, maybe it will happen before I, I kick the bucket. Yeah. Um. One one thing that came up, uh, I had a had a discussion online where the individual had suggested that um, this isn't going to happen. It's not going to make any sense. Why? What can these do that an industrial robot? can't do. And I said, well, for one, they're going to cost a heck of a lot less. 
and uh, so you know, if one breaks an arm, you can just here's a new arm, uh, <laughs> or if, if it's all integrated, yeah, here's a new robot, and then you can take that one back to the shop. And on top of that, I'm wondering if this might be more of a philosophical, uh, how you think about it, sort of situation, just like with boring, uh, the boring <laughs> loop. <laughs> the boring loop is is a. Uh, People say, well, why can't you just do a subway? This is a more complicated subway with cars. Uh, but then if you look at what boring is, has the potential to be, uh, Patrick and I talk about this all the time, um, kind of uh, routed packets, point to point. You, you, you're you not having to go through all the extra stops. You're not having to wait on 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 the uh, the dude with eight uh, briefcases to get on or or um, uh, the, the, the person who's making a scene in the subway to, uh, to be on your car. You, you're just going... So I said, from the airport to to the convention center, or from the convention center to your hotel, or any number of things, and so that sort of thinking might need to be applied to Optimus versus industrial robot. What what are we missing that that could do that? What, what could it open up? And at this point, it's a private company trying with private money, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, they can hire more people, or they can put an industrial robot in its place. Uh, and, and nothing was lost, but we probably would still have learned something, even if it doesn't work the way we thought it would. Yeah, it's interesting that you said the industrial robot because there will be continue to be uses for industrial robots, right? Yeah, like, Optimus uh, can't pick up a Tesla and hand it over the bridge uh, in Fremont. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, there are cases where you need the extra brawn of a stationary arm that's bolted to the concrete floor in order to do certain repetitive tasks. I, I get that, but. The versatility of Optimus is where it's at. Uh, being right. able to use that asset at a certain place to bridge something, to do something, and then decide, oh, I got to move it over to this other place and perform a different task. And I can use the exact same robot. I don't have to uncouple it from the ground. I don't have to reassemble it someplace else. I just right. tell it to go over there and it just walks over there. And that's all there is to it. Like right. that type of simplicity. Uh, and uh, the ability to use it in multiple scenarios is where this is going to win. Because just like the human body, uh, we can, of course, do different tasks at different times for different purposes. And that's the, the versatility gives us the win. And this is where Optimus is going to make a huge difference when it comes to the world of robotics. Like, uh, let's say you've got an industrial robot that takes the new world's largest windshield. It used to be the, the, the Model X. Uh, takes it and puts it on the on the cyber truck, uh, glues it on there and everything, and and that's something that Optimus can't do. But what Optimus can do is go sit in the driver's seat and tell you if anything is out of that point uh, point one nanometer precision that, that that Elon wanted. Probably not, but whatever to the, the its cameras can handle. And I say, oh yeah, you know, when this big robot put the windshield in, it was missing some glue, and then it can take up the same caulk station and 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 and, and put the glue with the caulk gun in there, or Say, say, say the guy who, who puts the sail panels on is, is is needs a bathroom break. Optimus can step right in, do that till he comes back to the line, and then they just switch places. And those are possibilities, and it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah, and the other thing is that is that of course all the assets currently are built for humans. Most of the assets right. are built for humans. So caulking guns, for example, saws, uh, lighting poles, whatever. These are all built for humans to use. So Optimus has the ability to grab those assets and use them in the way the humans use it. And you don't have to have all these specialized tools. There are things that both sets of hands, robotic and human, can use at any given time. And that, uh, you know, that's that's a big plus. So, yeah, like you were saying earlier about uh, the tools, you don't, you don't have like a specialized Optimus screwdriver. It's, it just picks up the uh, either the Ryobi or the or the, the, the the wall to the Milwaukee and and it keeps on going. So, so you change vendors of tools. You don't have to go and, and, and retrain your robot and you're not stuck with an industrial robot you spent a million dollars on that still does the job. But now you have to keep using the old tools that you're moving away from because you've got this investment in the robot. Exactly, exactly. And of course, once we get by this stage and we start to get uh, them sold to the public, then we are really going to be living in the sci-fi world. But but that's that's where my question comes to you that are watching here today is what if if you had the money or the uh, ability to purchase one of these robots, what tasks or task would you give that robot? 
to do for you. I would like to see in the comments uh, what you could use a robot for. Like, let's, uh, yeah, let's, the funny stuff, fine. But what real task could you see an autonomous robot performing for you that would help you? What things uh, would aid you uh, in your life to have an autonomous robot? Put them in the comments. Love to see what the, what you would reply with, uh, what what you believe a robot could be used for in your life. Well, I mean, I have to start out with Boto's shopping idea. That would be useful to me because that takes a lot of time out of my week. <laughs> and uh, personally, I was thinking chores. And, and then on the business side was something that I would do for business that, that I could then have a robot do while I sleep. That would be awesome. But definitely, I, I would love to see the comments on this. And then... Uh, Mark will probably highlight some if they come in on here or on on uh, on X that are like awesome. You never know. Yep, we can discuss in the future. So uh, leave your comments below. And let us know. I would really like to see that. Uh, if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up on the video. Press that subscribe button. Help us out. Um, Casey, any shout outs? Yeah. So you've watched us. Uh, if you're not subscribed, well, I don't know why not, but do it. And uh, then you'll catch us on Wednesday for our live show. Same time, same place. We'll hope to see you there. Very good. Very good. So with that, we will say good night. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, we'll get together next time and find out what's happening in the Tesla life.